Kitco Mining Special Coverage of BMO's 33rd Global Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference is brought to you by First Majestic Silver. Explorations, not acquisitions, is the Barrett Gold recipe. This is Paul Harris for Kitco Mining at the BMO Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference in Hollywood, Florida. And joining me today is Mark Bristow, President and CEO of Barrett Gold. Mark, welcome back to Kitco. Thank you. Hello, Paul. Before we start talking specifically about Barrick, I'd like to talk a little bit about the, the market in general. Gold has closed over 2,000 US dollars per month, per ounce, for the past 11 weeks now. It's been a fantastic three months for physical gold, but gold equities continue to be in a slump. Why do you think that is? What is the message you're getting from investors here at BMO? You know, I've, I've always said if you want to create value in mining, you've got to replace your, the ore bodies that you mine. And if you're going to do any M&A, it's got to be accretive. It's got to really add value. And I don't think we've been doing a good job on that uh, as the gold mining industry in particular. Okay. Now, Barrick has pioneered giving multi-year guidance. You've had a sober shareholder returns policy, and you've had a focus on organic exploration growth rather than buying growth. What, what else can you do? to get investors more interested? I think you've got to build that runway and, and that's what we set out to do back in 2019. A real focus on replacing the gold that we mine and the copper, by the way. And, uh, and if you look back to, to where we started and today we're, we've added 44 million ounces of, of gold and, and replaced all the copper we've mined over those five years at the same quality, so same grade. And, and despite the fact that we've had a fairly flat performance in, in our equity, uh, we've, uh, we've really built value and we've done no value destructive transactions. And, and, and now, when you look at our portfolio and particularly our expiration capacity, and, and the, you know, the way we run it is we don't increase the exploration budget. We've really invested in the quality of our explorers, and that's really what adds value in mining. I think the, the point you make about uh, the reserve replacement, replacing your depletion, is, is a very valid one. Um, over the course of the last decade, barracks production has, has, has fallen, and you seem to be now at a, a level where you can sustainably replace that depletion, uh, albeit at a lower level. Um, is that the way forward? Yeah, I think, Paul, that's what happens when you, when you have aspirations as a gold miner to go to seven, eight, nine million ounces with many multiple numbers of small short-life short mines is you keep building this cliff in front of you. And it's inevitable that you run out of uh, production. And that's what happened post-2011. Remember, post-2011, all the big gold miners went and bought and had aspirations to be nine million ounce producers. And, uh, and there was a flurry of M&A, some of it with uh, premium paper and some of it with cash. And then in 2015, when the gold price went down, uh, we had all these big write downs. You know, the industry wrote off about $70 billion and never really got that back and just continued to keep merging and without replacing. And, and so that's led to this cliff and more m and And I think what we've, well, I know what we set out to do back in 2019 is rebuild Barrick back to that original Barrick, which is all about value rather than size. It does sound like uh, in, in some ways you could sum up what you've just said as gold companies grew and became too big to succeed. Um, and to what extent do you think that's still the case in the sector? No, I think the, right now uh, everyone's uh, ex-growth. And, and, uh, and that's the focus that Barrick has, is to grow our future. And, and that is, first of all, you grow the runway, you extend the life of the mine, and then you add to it. And you add to it through, M&A is an option uh, if you can get, get it at the right price. Otherwise, you've got to find it. And to find it, you've got to have great geologists. And to have great geologists, you've got to invest in people. And, uh, you know, I think the mining industry is 
X growth when it comes to to its own uh, production, and it's also underinvested in people. <coughs> and so that's what we've been doing in the last five years: investing in our business, investing in our people, and uh, and investing in our future. It does seem there's a, a bit of a conundrum here, in as much as. Uh you still hear investors say there's too many gold companies, there needs to be consolidation. But when there's consolidation, companies arguably get too big and the, the value is just not there or they, they're not able to generate the value that uh, investors want. Um, how, how do we break this sort of cycle about yeah, I what think, investors I want? I think that's sort of a generalization. I, I do believe that there's too many management teams with too, managing too few assets. Uh, the, the, the challenge is the quality of those assets. and and it's hard to consolidate the, the sort of middle band of the industry at the moment because you've got a, a few very good assets embedded in very average asset portfolio, so it's hard to get to it. Um, and, and the junior market has, has got itself caught up in production, where, as you know, the a, a healthy exploration junior market in mining has, 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 has been this sort of feeder of the bigger miners for many, many years. But, you know, in the last decade, we've seen a lot of junior miners uh, bet on smaller deposits, which none of the big miners wanted to buy. So they ended up building them the, itself. And, and that takes away, you know, very agile juniors that always bring opportunities to an industry like the gold industry. But part of that is arguably because the, the junior, the smaller companies have had such a hard time raising the capital to do the exploration, they've had to find different routes. Yeah, I would, I would say, you know, I always bang on about short-termism. And I think the, what you've seen, and, and we've seen it again in the last four years, where the f uh, fund managers look to sh short-term returns and they starve the industry of, of its ability to invest in, 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 in the long term. And so, and, and, and again, the trading in the market for instant gratification, again, shortens the horizon. And, and, and when, when, when uh, mining uh, executives uh, fall for that, you really take away your future. And I think we're all, uh, the industry uh, itself, and, and I would say the, 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 the broader mining industry is, is, has really uh, been impacted by that short-termism. Okay. You've said um, you won't pay a premium to buy another company. So to what extent or not does that potentially shut doors to Barrett Gold in terms of potential opportunities? Well, I think it's, you know, we're very clear about our discipline and our filters that we apply. And, you know, the, the, it's all about the definition of a premium. You know, for good assets, you have to pay up. Um, and if they're good assets, they usually have opportunities to add to those assets or grow them or expand them. And so, you know, we've, I've done all the M&A transactions I've done in my career. I can honestly look back to them and show you the value that we've added uh, through this through the 40 years I've been around. But there are not many that we've done, but we, it's not that we don't try. Um, and I think um, for me, we're seeing it again. You know, you, you can't, a mining company getting big for big sake is not a, is not a sustainable strategy, I don't believe. So Barrica, let's say 5 million ounces a year, is, is that a sustainable size? Well, I think the thing that we really set as a target back in 2019 is our, my point uh, that I shared with uh, John Thornton at the time is that if you really want to grow a mining company and you have to be able to grow uh, to, be, to remain relevant in a public market, um, you need to look to the bigger deposits and, those, and so it takes you to Paul Fries. So it takes gold mining into, into the copper domain. And, 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 and because, you know, you want to get bigger, but you don't want to have a gazillion 
minds to operate. So that's the only way that you can really be effective is look for bigger minds and bigger minds are harder to find. Well, that makes a lot of sense having a, a, a multi-decade asset that can yeah. produce and produce and produce. Um, now, it's a strategic aim for Barak to get more copper and you have the Recordic project in Pakistan and the Moana Super Pit. Um, they're both due on stream in 2028. And you've also made some uh, investments in earlier stage junior companies um, where the best case scenario of any copper is going to be at least 20 years away. Why isn't Barak making investments in sort of more advanced stage copper projects like Zhejin's doing. It's putting some big money into some projects where potentially there is going to be production coming out in five or 10 years time. Yeah, so um, now you can really look at Rikidek. That's a lot less than 10 years time. Uh, so you can still develop uh, projects in, in, around the world in, 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 in shorter time. And I think our, our uh, permitting of uh, gold rush is a good sign for mining in the United States, for instance. Um, but I, I, for me, th what we set out to build is a sustainable, infinite business in Barrick. That's what we, and you know, it really, if you go back into the last century when Barrick was at first incorporated under uh, Bob Smith and, and Peter Monk, it created a huge value through exploration, discovery, and early stage M&A. And, &A. and I, I mean, I copied it in Rand Gold. I copied that same philosophy just in, in uh, North Africa. So that's what we've got to do again. And, and remember, in mining, you need to invest for future generations. And, and we plan not only for long-term assets, but for you know, succession and, and, and a continuation of this uh, infinite vision of, for Barrick, and that is to grow it into a, 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 you know, a substantial, uh, sustainable, valued organization. We've certainly done that in some assets, Pueblo Viejo in Dominican Republic, having that extension there. And you're generating a lot of excitement in the industry um, with the exploration in northern Nevada, um, where you've got the Nevada gold mines joint venture and some specific barrack assets as well. Um, what is going to be the next step there, the next big thing that uh, comes out of northern Nevada? So, I mean, we, uh, I think the next big step is we've got to fix the PV um, uh, expansion, and that's really around the crush, the, the conveyor belt, which we, we're busy replacing. So we've got some immediate actions to, to continue our journey of growing our production. In Nevada itself, I mean, we've added uh, a lot of ounces. Um, we're, we've got, uh, we're very comfortable with our brown fields, five-year horizon, replacing the gold that we mine. And, um, and, and we've got Gold Rush now up and ramping up, and it's gonna be a four-year exercise to ramp up to around 400,000 ounces. And then we've got the um, uh, Four Mile project right next door, which is 100% to your point, owned by Barrick. And we have committed $42 million this year to take it to a pre-feasibility level. Um, and we'll make that decision at the end of this year. And, and the thing that I'm absolutely convinced about is that we've got more four miles uh, around in that district and, and in Turquoise Ridge as well. We, we've now opened the ore bodies in both directions and we're gonna, you're gonna continue to see this. You know, I've challenged the team and this year we're gonna be spending 60% of our budget on green fields. I think one of the interesting things, uh, I think it was in the, your results conference call you mentioned, uh, and hopefully I get the, the figures correct, you want the team there, 15% of the budget has to be on drill holes that are yeah. not within 200 meters of another yeah. drill hole. So really force them to take those yeah. Big intellectual steps out, step yeah. out yeah, mm. to make, uh, hopefully discover exactly. something new. And we've got, you know, we're drilling in South Peru, we've got some pretty nice targets there. <coughs> we've. Uh, We've got some very interesting ground opening up in Tanzania. 
uh, which again will, uh, some of it extensions to them, the, the current mines, both North Mara and, and Bully and Hilu, but not extensions to the ore bodies, new potential additions. And then, uh, you know, greenfields um, uh, permits in, in across Tanzania particularly. Okay, let's focus on, on Latin America, if I may. You mentioned Peru, um, also starting to explore or planning to explore in Ecuador. Um, Argentina seems to be coming interesting again. You've still got the Sopasqua project in Chile. Um, and also, I think Guyana's still on your, your radar as a, a good potential. Yeah, region. We've, we've done some work in Guyana. Um, we have just established and secured some really exciting exploration uh, ground in Ecuador. Uh, we like Peru, particularly you know where we are in Peru. We've cleaned up the, the legacy barrack portfolio that's been around for a long time. Uh, we still uh, have a real focus around uh, Valadera because uh, just to add life wherever we can. So we've got a dedicated team there. And we added two years of life there last year. That's uh, Argentina? Yes, Argentina. And then Chile is, we're looking at the, you know, Chile's been an interesting place because it sort of went into a bit of a trough. And that's always a good time to establish yourself or re-establish uh, oneself. And, and we've been doing that. We've invested a lot in the old Pascua Lama legacy and, and our, relate, our license to operate in that, that area. And we are, um, we've, we've taken the old Pascua to closure um, and then we're looking to uh, reevaluate that project in a different form uh, going forward. And what would a potential new form or rebirth of Pasqua potentially look like? Yeah, Paul, I think we've still got a work to do before we can sort of frame that. I have said to the market back end of this year, we should be able to give them some sort of feel in the form of a scope study. Um, and then we can take it from there. Okay. Uh, closing things up, Mark, uh, what are some of Barrick's main goals for this year? Where do you want Barrick goal to be at the end of the year? For me, it's we, we need to build the f flexibility in our underground development in Nevada. That's one, the last step to get to build flexibility uh, in our underground mines. We've been struggling to get ahead of ourselves and we've brought in some contractors to help us. And after, after that, um, already during this year, I want to demonstrate our ability to bring these costs out uh, because we've been investing in infrastructure and, 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 and extending the life of these operations. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, in our profile, we get down to back down to the just over $1,000 an ounce all in sustaining costs, and that's where you should be. That's where those assets should be ultimately. And all the investments we made will support that for the long term. So that's an important one. Fixed PV, uh, you know, that's a, a real must. Um, and for me, I want to I want to secure new ground within the Central African Copper Belt. We, our teams are working hard to do that. We've got uh, some exciting new opportunities in Saudi that we want to we want to pursue. Um, we also have some joint ventures we were talking about uh, around and adjacent to Rick and Dick with some of our partners in uh, Pakistan. And really, that's the focus. And, and I think we've got it. Well, I know we've got the teams now that are capable to do it. And each one of our regions have great executive teams that can easily build a mine. And so we've got one being built in Mark's team in Latin Asia Pacific. Seb has got his focus on um, La Moana. We need uh, something for the North American team to chew on. And ideally, it, uh, in the short term, it will more than likely be Canada. Well, I wish you the best of luck on that and look forward to finding out more as and when these, uh, these aspects uh, materialize. Mark, thank you very much for joining us thank today. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for having me. And this is Paul Harris with Kitco Mining, the BMO Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference in Hollywood, Florida. And if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. Kitco Mining special coverage of BMO's 33rd Global Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference is brought to you by First Majestic Silver.